Madam President, at the outset, I express my appreciation to you for responding to the Algerian request to meet with a swiftness matching the urgency of the matter under consideration. I also thank Ms. Misuya for her sobering briefing. Madam President, dear colleagues, each time we meet in the Security Council to discuss the situation in Gaza, we tally the miseries and the unprecedented, including the Palestinians killed, maimed, displaced, orphaned, starved, and detained. And we deplore, demand, and condemn as we should. We felt that the Council had fulfilled its moral and legal duty by adopting four resolutions because they are legally binding and hence would have brought positive change for the people of Palestine and Israel. We supported all efforts toward a deal, hoping that we will have a ceasefire, release of the hostages and Palestinians illegally detained, and a renewed hope, a renewed hope for Palestinians, even in this darkest of times. One year and 47 meetings later in this chamber, our combined efforts have not had the expected results. And the situation in Gaza continues to worsen with each passing day. We must not allow the shredding of the moral and legal thread that holds our organization together. The most fundamental question then that this council faces is what will we do to stop this tide? Honest answers to this question with strong political will would no doubt engender the kind of action needed to save the lives of the millions of civilians in Gaza and in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, who have no escape. Guyana continues to be outraged by the suffering that the government of Israel is inflicting on the civilian population in Gaza and the inhumane conditions under which they have been forced to live. This undesirable situation is compounded by the frequent evacuation orders that have become a staple of this war and which Guyana concludes is part of a strategy to entrench instability and destroy any semblance of permanence. Displaced civilians face many hardships, including protection risks, food insecurity, and increased risk of disease. In fact, these risks are multiplied for civilians in Gaza, since many of them have been displaced multiple times since this war began last October. Madam President, international humanitarian law contains clear provisions about the forced displacement of civilian population in war. It is illegal. In the strictly limited cases where evacuation of the civilian population is permissible, the provisions are equally clear on the conditions under which the evacuation is to be carried out. Civilians' interests must be prioritized at all times, and their safety must never be compromised. Israel has not fulfilled any of its obligations in this regard. Its latest forcible displacement of civilians in the Northern Gaza Governorate coupled with its siege of the area is unconscionable, inhumane, and illegal. Civilians are so tired of their misery that many in Northern Gaza who are being displaced again have decided to stay. So if they are killed, whether by bombs or by starvation, they would have least, at least died in the place they called home. These are the stark choices that people are now making. Guyana condemns these actions by Israel and calls for adherence to its obligations on the international humanitarian law regarding the treatment of civilians in armed conflict. Madam President, these frequent evacuation orders also have a ne negative impact on humanitarian operations in the territory, since humanitarian personnel are forced to constantly be on the move and to reestablish themselves in new spaces all without security guarantees. This further exacerbates the dire humanitarian situation. Against this backdrop, Guyana underscores the following three points. First, the International Court of Justice 
has unequivocally declared the illegality of Israel's ongoing occupation, and the General Assembly has demanded that Israel bring to an end its unlawful occupation of the Palestinian territories. It is therefore illegal for the Israeli government to move to annex territory in the Gaza Strip. Guyana condemns Israel actions in this regard. Second, there is a veritable genocide taking place in Gaza. The International Court of Justice ordered Israel to take actions to prevent genocide in Gaza in accordance with that member state's obligations under the Geneva Conventions. Israel, however, continues to blatant dis blatantly disregard the ICJ's orders. In this circumstance, consideration must be given to how the Council could facilitate implementation of the ICJ orders. The floodgates have already opened in Gaza, and this Council must agree to pull the plug and stand up for Palestinians. Third, this Council has the mandate and responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security. We have tools at our disposal to carve out solutions to end this war. Let us use them. When legally binding resolutions and countless appeals to conscience and morality fail to change behavior, the hand of justice must be applied. We have convened today again because the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, particularly in the northern region of the Strip, who has reached a catastrophic level. <clears throat> While the international community celebrates today the World Food Day, Palestinians in Gaza are struggling to find food, basic food. They're present marked by suffering and deprivation and their future uncertain. I thank USG Suya for her sober briefing that serve as yet another harrowing testimony from the humanitarian community. It lays plain the stark reality on how the Israeli occupying authorities are not merely disregarding international humanitarian law, but are trampling, trampling upon the very essence of human decency. For over a year now, the Palestinian people, especially those in Gaza, <coughs> have endured suffering beyond imagination. It appears that the sadistic impulses of those responsible within the Israeli authorities knows no bounds when it comes to inflict, inflicting torment, inflicting punishment upon the Palestinian civilians. Civilians thus that must not be a military target. They are protected by the international law. The Israeli occupying power should fulfill its obligation in this regard. Especially the starvation of civilians as a method of warfare is explicitly prohibited under international humanitarian law. This prohibition extends to depriving civilians of object necessary for survival and impeding relief supply. Surprisingly, the second vaccination campaign that commenced 
on October 14, reached more than 157 children on its first two day alone. So how is it possible? How is it possible that we can vaccinate these children, yet we cannot feed them? How can we secure trucks transporting vaccines, but not those carrying essential food? The inevitable conclusion is that this is not, this is not a collateral damage, but a deliberate, calculated Israeli policy of starvation of the Palestinian people. Madam President, the International Court of Justice, in its provisional measures, ordered Israel, the occupying power, to, and I quote, take immediate and effective measures to enable the provision of urgently needed basic services and humanitarian assistance to address the adverse conditions of life faced by Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. End of quote. This Council, through Resolution 2728, explicitly reiterate its demand its demand for the lifting of all barriers to the provision of humanitarian assistance at scale. The response from the Israeli occupying power has been nothing, nothing short of disdainful. Closure of crossing point, increasing restriction on access and the immoral use, immoral use of starvation as a method of warfare. When we last convened on October 9th, last week, we raised alarms about the state of humanitarian assistance, noting that September, this last month of September, saw the lowest levels of aid since October of the previous year. We then expressed grave concern over the behavior of the Israeli occupying authorities who denied or impeded nearly 80% of humanitarian movement between northern and southern Gaza in September. The response of the Israelis authority to our concern more restriction, more killing of Palestinian civilians. Yesterday alone, 68 of them. In the past week alone, a mere six trucks, six trucks per day have been permitted to enter Gaza. A number so paltry, it border on the absurd, given the scale of need. Before the crisis, crisis, I want to remind that there were more than 500 trucks per day. Madam President, the occupying powers disregard 
for Palestinian lives doesn't stop there. They have escalated their tactics, adding new depth of cruelty to their actions. On the night of October 13th, they struck tents, tents in the vicinity of Al-Aqsa Mosque, Al-Aqsa Hospital. The result, at least four people burned to death, burned to death. Yes, you heard correctly, burned to death. This is the occupier's perverse demonstration of how sacred they consider human life. They consider Palestinians' life. The situation stands on the brink of further deterioration with the potential adoption of legislation by the occupying power, halting UNRWA operations. Such acts would strip Gazans of the black backbone of humanitarian actions and further complicate the United Nations humanitarian mission. Madam President, it is clear that the Israeli authorities are not listening to anyone. Not the ICG, not the General Assembly, not this very council, not even their closest allies. But this Security Council has the authority and possess the tools to ensure the enforcement of its decision. The time has come for decisive action. The lives of countless civilians, Palestinian civilians, hung in the balance. I thank you. Je remercie le représentant d'Algérie. Je passe la parole au représentant de la Slovénie. Thank you, Madam President. I also want to thank uh, Acting Under Secretary General uh, Ms. Suya for her briefing today. Slovenia is a country established on the principle of self-determination. Despite our celebration of independence, a siege is not a foreign word to us. Our capital was under siege during the Second World War for three years. In our region, the siege of Sarajevo during the conflict in the 90s was the longest lasting total siege in the contemporary European history. We can associate with the siege and indiscriminate bombing and people being killed in line for food or population without food, medicine, gas, electricity and water population deprived of human dignity. Back then, we declared never again. A siege is not a foreign word to Palestinians. Gaza has been not only under occupation, but under a siege for years, for decades. What we are hearing and witnessing today about Israeli government attitude towards the northern Gaza is a siege with within a siege, a total siege of starved and traumatized civilians. Colleagues, this council has met many times. With the number of meetings we had, Slovenia avoids repeating what our briefers share with us. So today I want to be clear with our messages. We call for an immediate ceasefire. We call for immediate release of hostages. We call for lifting of all barriers to delivery of humanitarian assistance to Gaza. We call for basic humanitarian aid, food, water, fuel, medicine, hygiene material, basic things to be delivered at scale. 
we call for urgent delivery of winter supplies. Again, basic items like proper shelters, warm clothes and blankets. We call for immediate restoration of food systems and basic services. We call for opening all available routes to and throughout the entire Gaza Strip, including of border crossings to provide humanitarian assistance to all those in need. We call for immediate and sustained access of UN missions to the north. We call for protection of civilians and civilian infrastructure, schools, displacement sites, and healthcare facilities. We call for an end to attacks on healthcare and for addressing critical shortages of essential medicines and equipment. We call for an end to forced displacement, including through evacuation orders. We call for special protection to be granted to wo women, children, persons with disabilities, older persons, and other persons in vulnerable situations. We call for a fully functioning deconfliction mechanism to ensure safety and humanitarian operations. We call for protection of humanitarian and health workers, including with access to appropriate protection equipment. We call for safety, security, and respect of United Nations, its personnel and its premises. We call for withdrawal of legislation of UNRWA, which would collapse humanitarian operations in Palestine. We call for respect of international law, particularly international humanitarian law and human rights law. We call for full implementation of Security Council resolutions and ICJ provisional orders, which are binding and must be implemented. We call for end of impunity. We call for accountability. We call for security of Israelis and Palestinians. We call for assumption of a meaningful and time-bound political process leading to two-state solution. We call for upholding of the UN Charter, also by this Council. We call for peace. So colleagues, we will not forget Gaza, and we will not lose hope for this Council to speak with one voice. Thank you.